All right, today our question is, if you have a cancer gene in your family, how much can you reduce your risk with diet? Oh my, uh, that's of course a very complex question because cancer is a very complex subject. There's many, many types of cancer. Some are very aggressive, some have a strong family history, others not so much. Depends on your uh, exposure to carcinogens. If you work in a in an oil refinery or a paint factory, you're going to be inhaling lots of carcinogens. A lot depends on the individual person. But that said, in the spirit of answering the question, yes, diet can certainly have a significant role in whether a uh, particular uh, person might be more predisposed to getting cancer. How can that be? Uh, well, just in general, people are probably familiar by now, the very act of cooking animal muscle, which is what we do when you're eating a roast chicken breast or a broiled steak, the very act of cooking that piece of animal muscle oxidizes the cell membranes with lots of cholesterol in them. Uh, and that's going to produce uh, hydrocarbons, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that are blatantly carcinogenic. You know, rub them on uh, stomach linings or colon linings and they will spawn cancer. So the very act of getting on a plant-based diet uh, and avoiding fried foods where the veggies are not cooked at high temperatures, creating free radicals, et cetera. If their vegetables are cooked basically with water so the temperature never gets that high, uh, you really reduce the carcinogen risk. So that alone, getting on a plant-based diet uh, is, uh, is an anti-cancer move. Uh, second, uh, the wonderful thing about animal, I'm sorry, about uh, plant foods uh, is that they're filled with what are called phytonutrients, plant nutrients, uh, that when they get into cells, they have a stabilizing effect. They neutralize free radicals. They promote uh, the function of genes that, that facilitate cell repair and cell membrane stabilization. There, uh, there's lots of anti-cancer properties to all those lovely green and yellow vegetables. So uh, in going to a whole food plant-based diet, you've pulled out most of the carcinogens. Uh, you've added a whole lot of anti-cancer uh, uh, molecules. So there's two great moves where diet can lower your cancer risk. Uh, third, uh, we now know that when people eat high protein diets, they're eating all that meat, why well, I want that protein to build muscles. Well, when you eat a high protein diet, you eat a piece of meat or other concentrated proteins, uh, all the amino acids that make up that protein flood up into the liver and the liver responds by putting out a surge of a hormone called insulin-like growth factor one, IGF-1. Uh, and this is a powerful hormone that promotes growth throughout the body. And it's kind of a juvenile hormone. If you're a six-year-old girl, you want lots of IGF-1 or a 10-year-old boy. But if you're a, a woman with a breast cancer or a man with a prostate cancer, the last thing you want is a whole lot of IGF-1 uh, flowing around your system, fanning uh, cancer growth like throwing gasoline on a fire. And it's been well known that the folks on plant-based diets have lower levels of IGF-1. That is going to uh, reduce cancer risk. Uh, if we do have a small cancer growing, uh, there's a good chance that our, our own immune system will dissolve the cancer cells uh, as long as they're not being stoked by the IGF-1. There's many other mechanisms. Uh, the, the fact that meat and dairy products have lots of hormones, lots of estrogens and androgens added to them. Uh, the cows are pregnant in the dairy barns, so dairy products are full of estrogens. And again, these are growth promoting hormones. And if you've got a breast cancer, prostate cancer, et cetera, all the uh, estrogenic and androgenic hormones in the meat and the dairy will spawn uh, cancer growth. I can go down the list here, but in general, now, people who eat a whole food plant-based diet are really doing a major service to themselves, if they, especially if they have a family history of cancer in melanomas, lymphomas, et cetera. The best thing they could do to lower their risk uh, is to stop the meat, dairy, and, and processed foods and uh, eat those lovely colorful salads and soups and steamed veggies. Is it a guarantee? No. Uh, we live in a pro-carcinogenic world. We breathe carcinogens in the air from the auto exhaust. The water has uh, um, contaminants in it, uh, trihalomethanes that, uh, that contribute to cancer growth. There's a carcinogenic world we're living in. But that's all the more reason 
to, to stop the meat and dairy and, and flood your body with those lovely phytonutrients with every meal. Uh, so it will uh, reduce your chances of cancer actually taking root and growing. So uh, eat those veggies, get on that plant-based diet, and uh, you'll really take uh, powerful steps to reducing your risk of cancer, even if you have it in your family history. Great information, lots of information. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And um, it seems like, you know, you did answer that question that uh, there's no guarantee, but it surely can lower the risk. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.